Mass Effect as a series means a lot to me. It means a lot to plenty of people. Coming out of the studio that brought the gaming and role-playing crossover demographic, iconic titles like Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Neverwinter Nights, Baldur's Gate, and Jade Empire, Bioware truly cemented their historical status in 2007 when they released the first Mass Effect game. Fundamentally changing the modern video game role-playing systems, gameplay mechanics still in heavy use today, Mass Effect introduced an entirely new audience of geeks and gamers alike to RPG video games. And it took my incessant need to write and tell stories into its arms and force-fed it. It evolved me. Stranding my recently sober, high school in the rear view, teenage self on the beach and said, Well, you'll be damned if you ever play another game with a soggy story and characters and feel any sort of satisfaction. It changed the way a lot of folks saw the world of interactive storytelling, myself included. We have been swimming through a heck of a lot of familiar waters lately, and this week we're scratching at the recesses of immense memories born more than a decade ago. You see, today marks the moment that the remaster of the original Mass Effect trilogy, dubbed the Legendary Edition, drops on store shelves both digitally and physically. But before we turn off side streets and hit the highway of dreams and past lives, this needs to be said. This is not a first impressions podcast of the highly anticipated and ecstatic inducing remaster. This is an ode to the greatest sci-fi RPG video game trilogy of all time. My name is Wyatt Fawcett, and this is The First Bite. BioWare has gone and tried to accomplish many a thing since closing out the original trilogy of this sci-fi adventure game in the Mass Effect Baseline series starring Commander Shepard. The only notable positive experience of them all would be Dragon Age Inquisition, a game that gives and gains all the praise of a well-made BioWare game, yet somehow doesn't ever seem to click with me, someone who has spent hours and hours in their worlds. Wrapping up the trilogy in 2012 with Mass Effect 3, Bioware has spent the better part of the last decade clamoring at their past success or drudging up nostalgic adoration. A cancelled game called Shadow Realms, and the ridiculously shallow launch of Anthem and its trip behind the barn to be old Yellard, is pretty much all that there was between then and now. All has led us back to the here and present moment. Bioware has turned heel on the construction of new intellectual properties, and is currently working on a fourth Dragon Age game, and a fifth Mass Effect title, both with unknown release dates and both bogged down by a wait of a million fans begging for a return to form. In the meantime, fans starve for the charm and intricate storytelling and atmosphere of a Bioware game in their prime, can relive the truest of adventuring space-bound captains and their ever-evolving crew of pals that exhibit some of the greatest character building in gaming history. I could write and then read a novel's worth of platitudes regaling you about the incredible list of redeemable qualities the original trilogy possesses. However, thanks to this legendary edition, I don't really have to. The tremendous component of this remaster is the fact that many burgeoning gamers of the younger age groups who were not upright and button mashing the first time these video games came out, get a chance. In addition, the few that passed on the opportunity to give these games the time that they deserve a decade ago get yet another shot. This is the astounding treasure that the remastering and nostalgia mining operation in media can dig up. There are some massive, sorry, changes to the Legendary Edition in comparison to the original trilogy, the most important of which comes in terms of the finale. No, the directors didn't change the semi-controversial ending to Mass Effect 3. Rather, 
They have stated that given players opportunity to experience all three games back to back, or as a complete story arc, they say, the team at Bioware are hoping that games will see the ending in a different light this time around. As for the actual gameplay, the majority of changes are seen in the first Mass Effect game. Originally released in 2007, there have been nearly two entire console generations between then and now. This upgrade in hardware is most noticeable when it comes to the epically lengthy elevator rides, used as a way to spark intricate lore building conversations between Shep and their squad mates while also hiding some notoriously long loading times, they were longer than it takes to read Tolstoy's War and Peace. Luckily for newcomers and those returning to the Normandy, the elevator rides are almost non-existent now, and those that are still breathing are skippable. However, there are some vitally palpable talks between mates in those metal boxes, ones that you probably shouldn't miss. Also tweaked for modern comforts are the user interface and the heads-up display, now in line with the games made later in the series, bringing Mass Effect into the same realm of design as Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3. Another loathful portion of the original was the Mako, or vehicle gameplay segments, and these have also been massively tweaked in order to not feel so torturous and dated, but the team at Bioware has gone to great lengths to explain their updates to this system, and I don't need to retread water here. In theory, the brilliance of Mass Effect, the first time around, is emblematic of all the good fortune that Bioware wove in the first few works they released into the ocean that is video games. The action RPG genre was still in its infancy, but the charm and relatively unforgettable character moments stream from start to finish continue to be the bar that every other interactive piece of media has had to live up to. Even Bioware themselves have struggled to reobtain a prowess they so wonderfully put on display all those years ago. Fortunately, gamers, and Bioware in relation, get to relive that historical trilogy set to re-establish a story-driven developer as the kings of their class. You see, Mass Effect doesn't overcomplicate and it doesn't overcrowd. Rather, it flourishes and bedazzles in all the right places. Instead of trying to pack in far too many things to pay attention to, Bioware was, emphasis on the was, the absolute best at giving the minimal amount of content the deepest of adorning features. Many games have come and gone trying to make partnerships and computer-controlled characters that both maintain a punchiness and contain enough depth to fall in love with. And I'm talking in an emotionally connected way and in terms of romance story arcs. Yet, all of them seem to have failed in one way or another to meet the quality of writing, choices, and character development found within the Normandy amongst the boundlessly audacious crew. The tale of Commander Shepard is a fantastic one, rife with trials and tribulations on a scale nearly unmatched by modern games. You get to witness a leader try to save people, and even that story isn't much in comparison to how wonderful and epic the cast of supporting characters are. These are some of the most extraordinary, enduring, alluring, and profound stories and characters in all of science fiction. The only problem is, from where I'm sitting, and probably from where you're sitting too, it's impossible to tell whether or not this Bioware, the one currently fleshing out the next games in the Mass Effect and Dragon Age franchises, has the same love for the story, setting, and characters now as they did back then at the early stages of the 21st century. Revisiting the trilogy that firmly cemented the pedestal upon which the credibility of their work sits is healthy for everyone. However, it is crucial to remember that this does not a good cookie bake. While we revel in the original Mass Effect stories, all downloadable content included except for one, we've got to wait and see what comes of these pinnacle franchises in the near future. 
For now, I will put my cynicism and skepticism aside. It is a very palpably exciting time to be a Mass Effect fan. Because we have, in flesh and digital, one of the greatest three-part stories ever to grace science fiction as a genre. It's back. And it's modern. And it's ready for a rehash. Or a first time. As far as the Legendary Trilogy goes, this is marketed as a First Impressions podcast, in theory. My opinion comes as someone who has spent hundreds of hours in this world. Changes included in the Remastered Trilogy make the entire experience smoother, so far. And I am notably giddy, much like a man-child clutching his Club 33 membership card standing on the precipice of Disneyland for the umpteenth time. I look forward to the ride. Dream about rides that could never live up to the expectations set inside this park. And I step through the turnstile yet again. Gleeful. With a vibrating excitement in my knees. Destined to flirt with these memories over and over again. Perpetually using my guest pass to bring new, adoring gamers into this theme park of epic proportions for the very first time. And I just can't. Wait. I'll see you aboard the Normandy. I want to say thank you to all the people that have stopped by both on social media and in our reviews and just said that how much they appreciate the show. I am having so much fun writing and recording it. I'm having so much fun playing some games that I might not necessarily give the time of day considering my pretty busy schedule. It has been eye-opening in one way, and also extremely gratifying in another. I look forward to this day every week, where I get to share something I've connected with, with all of you. And everyone has been so kind and supportive, both in my personal life and those online. We have also recently launched a really short, really small kind of compendium companion newsletter to this show it is called the patch notes it is focused on canadian video game companies and news throughout the week really it's just an amalgamation of the things that are happening every week and we've been publishing it on mondays so i will put a link in the show notes uh, for the newsletter if you want to sign up and receive this monday's issue I would love to hear from you guys both positive and constructively negative critiques on social media. The easiest place to reach out to me is on Twitter. I'm at Wyatt Fawcett. And if you're picking up Mass Effect Legendary Edition, I just hope you have as much fun and build as many memories as I did when I first played these games. I know I'm jumping back into it now, but I'm not the type of person that loves to revisit stories, especially stories that are on this scale and that impact me this much. I like to play around and, and watch movies that give me a giddy feeling or, or have a puzzle that I'm trying to st still solve, and I'm not one for going back and reliving a memory that I cherish. Not necessarily in a negative, but more so that I prefer to live in the host of memories that currently create that pool of warmth that I can recall and reach back out to. And, and Mass Effect, uh, the entire franchise has been such a big, big momentous one for me in both my love of video games and also my love of narrative and writing. I adore the comic books and the novels and even don't have too many bad things to say about the latest game, Andromeda. Um, and I know that Bioware is kind of trying to uh, play both sides with the Mass Effect Legendary Edition because they can. They're going to pull in a bunch of new people. They have a new Mass Effect game coming out soon. 
and this is going to grab some people's attention. And it's also candy and satisfying to everyone who truly loves these games. I owe a lot to the Mass Effect franchise, and maybe it was the age I played them at, or the place in my life I was in at the time, but it went a long way in, you know, preparing my life and maintain, helping me maintain my sobriety. I hope that everyone that turns it on for the first time and meets all these characters truly enjoys every bit of it because it is a fantastic experience and the journey is worth the time, I promise you. Again, thank you so much for listening, and I will see you guys next week.